Hello and welcome back to another episode of Real Talk with George Frank. We are joined again by Dylan Lush, world and European medalist. Thanks for taking the time to no come back on and talk to us today. No so we've got a bit of a different one today. It's a, it's a subject that's quite close to both of us. We've both experienced it and yeah, we're we'll, we'll just going to talk through our own experiences, how we've dealt with it and how it's impacted uh, sport in general because I believe nowadays it really is a big thing in sport especially that it really needs to be combated because a lot of people are having difficulty dealing with it or they just don't know how to overcome it. So yeah, we're going to talk about mental health within elite sport. So first off, we're just going to talk about what we think mental health is because obviously everyone's got their own interpretation, they've got their own experiences, what they've went through. Uh, so yeah, what, what what do you actually think mental health is? It's a, diff- it's a, well, it's a difficult one to kind of... Yeah, because it is such a broad, it is it is, broad it subject. It anything from, yeah. from the mental illness side of it, it can be anything from terms of just having the capacity to focus, whatever yeah. it is, mental health, it's the same as the physical health, are you, is your physical condition, are you, can you, you know, can you run a certain distance and things like that, it's the same in the mind, can you, do you have that in your mind where you can put aside any sort of adversity that yeah. could be, you could be going through in your life, uh, whether that be something from your job, from your studies, could be yeah. something within your sport, could be yeah. something just not going your way, could be a result of a competition that could be affecting you, how, how, uh, how does your mind can I deal with that and put that to the side? Or, so I think that's the yeah. way I feel like it is. No, it, it, it definitely is because obviously, as we say, it's not a physical illness. People think that it, it is almost something else. They, they just almost put it to the back of their mind. They don't really pay that much attention to it. They think it will just almost go away itself without actually focusing and working on it. Cause Say you break your leg, for example, you, you wouldn't just carry on walking. You'd need to rest it, repair, recover. And it really is the exact same with your mind. Like you, we take it for granted being able to do a sport or be able to just get up in the morning and do everyday natural things. But to some people, that that is a struggle. It, it, it really is. Yeah, it's another thing as well. Just can't see it. Exactly. Just can't see exactly. It. And if people... If people don't see it, yeah. they don't think it's a problem, or people may necessarily not see that person struggling, yeah. so they just treat them the same way as they may need help from someone else. Yeah, really yeah. 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 And as we say, it is such a broad subject, like, like any physical uh, break or anything like that, there's so many different things to it, there's, as we say, like, it could be depression, it could be anxiety, it could it could be the simplest things of not being really f- be able to focus yeah. or have the confidence to do yeah. something, but even the simplest of task of getting up at a certain time, like you'd even struggle being able to do that if you've got a mental health uh, issue. Yeah. But you may not necessarily see, you may think that you're just being lazy. Yeah. Almost I feel like that's what people almost think they think to themselves that it's not an actual not a problem but it's not something they deal with and then it just keeps on multiplying and growing and growing and growing until you're almost at that breaking point and it's like you're pushed so far that you're going to need even more help yeah. instead of addressing that at yeah. the time yeah yeah definitely yeah so that, obviously we've both it's both affected us probably in different ways like how how has it like affected you like just in your day-to-day life or day-to-day life um, well obviously we've got a pandemic you know yeah. and uh, that's for me that's where i've kind of felt mental health um kind of struggle yeah we struggle quite a bit and that's probably a would, lot you, would, you, would you say it's heightened it it's heightened it yeah. a lot yeah it's, yeah yeah it's definitely like you know you've got the as you say to try and get out of bed in the mornings harder than what it normally be. Especially because you don't have that routine, that set yeah. routine. Like your day, as in lockdown, you're literally confined to your own room, basically. Yeah. And especially if 
you know, obviously you're at uni, yeah. working as well, you're working in the same environment as, you know, doing everything in, yeah. you almost feel trapped, yeah. and you don't have any way to escape that, yeah. almost. You can relate to that with me as well, like obviously I've been yeah. studying as well, and then work, obviously working now that you're working, and yeah. you're, you are just in that room all day, yeah. and you all don't, night, yeah. and pretty much alone with thoughts and yeah. other things, so it's, it's, it's a tough one, and then the mornings are always the hard part, so if anyone can get up in the morning and just get washed up, just to do something that Something, yeah, like, something, something sim- yeah. simple little tasks that people they take for granted almost, but yeah. if you have those simple little tasks and you keep building them each day and you add another one in and another one in, it just heightens your confidence and yeah. it gives you a purpose to get up and be like, right, I can do this, I can actually do this one and do that one. And you just build up until it becomes bigger things like, yeah. say, being able to train or being able to focus on uni work. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's just it is a big it's a process as with any physical break or anything like that it's a process that you yeah, need to it's build a, it's a rehab yeah literally it's a rehab for just the head yeah. instead of the, the, the physical yeah. leg break which everyone can see and everyone exactly when you see a leg break you know what that person needs to do it has to be it's to be wrapped yeah. up in the stookie it has to be you know you've got that week of just that's rest and then yeah when the stookie's off that's when the, when the rehab kicks in so again, it's, it takes weeks, it takes, it takes yeah. time. So it's it, really, it, really is, it really is a process, yeah. like a time and process. Like, it's one of those things that you, you can't rush. You can't rush yeah. back to it because if you try and almost run before you can walk, then it's just going to have a yeah. detrimental effect. Like, it's just going to, once you reach that certain point and you can't do something, it's just going to knock your knock confidence you straight back. Yeah, I think that's where I kind of fail and leave you a bit of a especially kind of recently with things that say uh, you know there's, there's days when you feel brand new and you feel a lot better and you feel like you've got oh, it's fine that's a it was a thing in the past and then the next day it's back to square one and it knocks your confidence again and then you're back in bed just yeah. not getting up until after 12 and things like that yeah. so it's uh, and it really it really uh, so it, you really almost fall into that routine being like after that that day, I'll just do it again and again, and you just almost fall into that until until someone actually makes plans or puts you back in the yeah. routine. Almost, it gives you a reason to get it again. I feel, I feel yeah. like, especially during lockdown, that's been the biggest thing for me. Just having someone there where I'm, I have to be there for that certain time. Yeah, it really. It so gives me a reason to get up it in the morning. Just bringing back the, the things from life that we've missed through that this you, pandemic. That you it's... take for granted almost. Yeah. Like meeting up with your friends, you, you'd always yeah. usually do that. Exactly. But, but just being in a place, yeah. being at work for a time or being at uni for a time. Yeah. Like, just try to bring that sense that of normality back yeah. as well. Exactly. And, which we have missed in our daily lives because obviously we do feel trapped. Yeah. Like, that, exactly. that, 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 is, that is a thing. Yeah, it, it, it's been a crazy whirlwind of 13 months because that's basically how long we've been in exactly. lockdown for. Yeah. And each month that you think you're going to get back to normality, you just get knocked back yeah. again. And it's just a vicious cycle. Yeah, it's, like, uh, it's just it's like us against the odds. Yeah, especially, yeah. especially with us training. It's like we want to get back, but we can because, and that's been our life. We get us sessions outdoors and they start to. Okay, there's a new routine coming in and then that's you back to square one so then it's back to yeah you can't do it again you can do this now but you can't do that and that's just been it's been a constant cycle since coming out of lockdown from the first time and then and now we're going to come back out of a, of a lockdown yeah um hope touch wood, touch that wood aye, touch this wood. is this is touch the final bit yeah, yeah. Touch, i know anything, anything um yeah um so hopefully and we all everyone said hopefully this time and it ends up not being but hopefully I, this is the right that, that that is more of an easing yeah of the lockdowns now which is which is what you need yeah. hopefully we're gonna yeah. get back to that normality soon so leaning on to that take us back to almost when you first experienced like issues or struggles with mental health like what what, what was almost the trigger or the starting point because i feel i feel like it's, it's a difficult thing to pinpoint but if you share what you experience people may be able to relate to it and almost yeah. and almost be able to deal with it more there and then yeah like if, if they understood well, that, that 
that that yeah. isn't what I should be feeling like or dealing with. Exactly, yeah. Because I mean, to to go back to a point where I could pinpoint where I knew I had it, mm-hmm. it would have to be between two thousand seventeen. Yeah. But I f- I think I had been suffering from anxiety um, since I was young. Like just I don't worry about things, just small things. Um, I remember being in primary school. Um, just going into high school and then I'd be worried about exams, I'd be sitting four and fifty and four and fifty and you know what I mean? So I'd be worried about that and didn't yeah. want to feel well. But at the point where I it kinda took a break in point. It took a yeah. it just came to a, the point where yeah, things were I just had to change and get help them. Um, so it was two thousand seventeen I was in college and just things in college were going the way I'd like them to go, um, yeah. just not necessarily my fault, just Is it one of those things where, as we're going back to it, it's almost knocking your confidence as well? Yeah, like, uh, it was sort of like going into that again, it was like my anxiety led to me spiralling into a depression because all I would think about is how am I going to get to uni, what am I going to get to uni, what am I going to take up in the future, what will I work as then, what am I going to do these stupid things, and then I'll be seeing people work as a tradesman or outside, and I'm like, I can't that's not life. That's not, life. That's not, that's not for me, it's yeah. just a deep sadness within me as I looked at that. There's nothing wrong with being a, that was yeah. on a construction site, but that's that's not your dream. That's yeah, not your that's goal. That's not my dream. That's and th- that, that this is yeah. this is the thing, right? We need to go through life having those dreams and goals because, exactly. yeah, as we say, uh, that will that will give you something to aspire yeah. to and get up every morning. I think part of that was coming from this from background as well. But if you have that goal, and you have that focus, and anything but achieving that goal is absolutely like if you do anything else apart from achieve that, it's, it's no not enough and you, you've got that I don't care about anyone says but you'll always have that regret in you so like yeah. if you, until you achieve that goal that's when you feel complete and then from there it's always for every athlete for every person to keep moving on it's always right what's next what's the next goal yeah. so so you could always build on it yeah but obviously at college you're Just constantly like, getting knocked back yeah and you couldn't you couldn't pinpoint Obviously, you were doing well in one thing, then yeah, not so well, so and you, your your mind was obviously. These were, these were the, honestly though, like looking back, at these were things I just wish I had the kind of what's the what's the word? The kind of you know the benefit of hindsight. Like just if I could go back and tell myself, like look, exactly. these aren't things that you can control. You've handed in the work that you you can do, and it was it was to deal with markers and external markers. Exactly. It was all politics, and it was all it was all it was always bickering and trying to get one up on each other. The, 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 mar- the markers, but it was kind of expensive for my life, and not just my own yeah. life. Like it was other people in the course that were getting affected by it, and yeah. I was always mad how they could kind of, you know, kind of deal with it better than what I could. What, why? Why was I struggling so much? Why? Because I'd be like driving from my house, going to college, and I wouldn't know how I got to college because I'd be in my car driving, but. And you're just in like my, I was just thinking, almost. I was leaning on to things again, yeah. the building site one that was, uh, oh, just being like, what other job could I do? And I could just be a policeman, but then I'm like, oh, if I see someone getting murdered, or if I'm standing next to a dead body, I'm not going to enjoy that. And it was yeah. just, just it's, it's, it's almost just picking every negative, and ca- yeah. like, whatever you can call it now, catastrophic thinking. It was just every negative from every situation. It was always, that was all my head could come, could come around. And I didn't know what that was, I didn't know. Exactly. You know, exactly. Thought, this is the thing because yeah. it's not physically happening. You do not know what yeah, it I was actually just, is. I was just kind of trying my best to keep going. Like I knew something was like, kind of no right, but it was nothing like. Nah, I don't even know. I'll just talk to someone about it. But, uh, can I, I had my ways of trying to speak to like my mum and dad. So I never translated well when I was, I was trying to get across what I was thinking. Because yeah. as, as I say, I, I never. I never really knew, I couldn't comprehend what was going on in my own head, like, it was just, yeah. And like, I always thought, like, even, like, when I was young, like, going into tournaments and stuff, it was always, oh, if I beat this person, I'll get that person next, but it was, that was just a, I always just thought that was down to nerves in yeah. the competition. I, th- I think it, part of it still was, but I think it was maybe, to, the, to an extent of it was anxiety as well, yeah. but, um, 
Because I, I don't know, but I always classify nervousness and anxiety completely different. I classify yeah. anxiety as where you are not just overthinking, but you know, it's it actually it's affects consuming, everything in yeah, your it's life. You, like you're, you are. Yeah. Like if you could be speaking to me and I'm just, you could be telling me something about your life, or you could be asking me a, a question, and all I've got in my head is that problem. Yeah. And then I turn around to you and I'm like, what, what do you say to me? Um, because you're not in, you're not in the the now. You're you're, you're in somewhere where your head's taking it. And that's it's a dangerous, dangerous. And, but, and, uh, and at the same time, people don't realise that's anxiety like that. They just think they're daydreaming or yeah, they've just lost focus. Being rude. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, they don't. This is something that you know, used to be spoken about more. Maybe through like experiences of hearing that from other people that it will almost help them. Yeah. Maybe we realise it, but before before it gets into a more serious situation. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah so. What's it again? Just. Yeah, I had suffered that for such a long time, and then the late one. I think it was what the April started to feel like the hands in the tidy unit to go in and stuff like that, and what that had been, and then obviously the results were all mucked about. So I was already kind of stressed and kind of need to get this done because I had the pressure of. Can I on myself um, to get to uni and stuff yeah. like that? So I, I wanted it, was, to, it was your goal and your yeah. dream? Yeah. Um, so I'd always put that pressure on myself. I knew that that was it. Do, do you always, obviously with karate, you deal with pressure? Mm-hmm. But do you think you were, it was, you were putting too much pressure on yourself, so, which so. almost led to anxiety taking over? Because mm-hmm. obviously, if you weren't able to reach those goals straight away, you put even more pressure on yourself to try and beat it even more yeah. and it just almost spiraled and it magnified. Did, it did, uh, but it was always the, the what if thinking, yeah. what if I don't, and that was the bit that always killed me, it was the what if, and then yeah. play the scenarios out, and the scenarios would always do the damage of, you know, you, you, you start to feel your heart beat, raise, like, going from like, just nice and normal to like, as if you're going out a run, like, you know, yeah. that way, it was yeah, like that, just the sweat was put, like, just, I remember just the sweat going down my back and just feeling so uncomfortable and yeah and then like in the house if like the the, the group chat with my phone it off it'd be it'd be like a, a vegetary yeah. and just try to turn my phone off and things like that just because I just ended up couldn't kind of deal with things like that um, so how how obviously you say like you were jittering all that but how did I was like the anxiety and depression how did that impact like your life like like how did that impact your uni work, uh, your college work, and your sport, and all that. How, what impact did it have? Were you able to focus on them, um, or were you almost in a trance, yeah, like I, you didn't really know what to do? At times, I could. Um, but then there, there was just times that it just boiled. It got to the point where I just couldn't, couldn't go to training. I was like, no, I'm going to training because when I was at, like, you know, I could go to training, and I was at training, I'd still be thinking of it. Unless I was there in a, like a proper intense drill, that was like the escape part. But then when you're doing community, the intense drills aren't for long. So it's just brief moments, so it was hard. So yeah. even if you had like a break, something else to focus on, like training for example, it still, it still impacted you? It still like, impacted it, 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 didn't, it didn't matter what you'd done to try and combat it, it was always there. No matter what I did, if I turned the belly yeah. on to just escape from a bit, it yeah. was still there. If I watched yeah. a YouTube video, it was still there. Um, yeah. Because whenever I went to karate, my worry was I'll not be able to get a job where I can do karate still. It was always... And it just it negatively was, impacted. It was everything I did yeah. um, from the day, from the moment I got up to the moment I fell back asleep again. Yeah. And I had trouble sleeping at night. Um, Told that you're getting PP and that's you. 
and down a wee. When you look back at it, it's only an A from a B. It's still good. But yeah, uh, but I'll anxiety say, at the time. with the way you were, yeah. the list of things, it would just knock you for yeah, six. So it did knock me for six, but it's much more difficult to fight a you're still, you're still able to continue with what, but yeah. obviously in that in that moment you were like, oh, I'm not going to be able to get to where I want to get. Uh-huh. And it's just the fact that I was on, played about so much before, yeah. the whole the finalisation of it, but um, I remember I was kind of struggling to get out of bed and all that, and she was up now. Was that just off the result or was that just everything? Just, um, the, just yeah. everything, just yeah. it was off the, well, it was off the result, yeah, it was all down there. The yeah, that, that's where I, what it's I, hated, I hated going into college and I hated driving to college because I'd always drive by at the Southern General and that was, for me, that was the sign that I was near college, so then my heart started to go again, it was all about to and I hated in college, I just wanted to leave and, and it's, I don't know why I didn't yeah. leave. Then, but anyone else they did, but I just, I just stuck it out. I, I don't know how. I wanted to leave, which uh, which is a great a great thing to yeah. say that you've done. Like even with everything that you went yeah. through, you still stuck it out. Uh, which yeah, it's yeah. a testament to your character. Which is why the ball what adversity you're going to face. Looking back on what you went through there, you're. Tears were kind of coming to my face, so I'm just like, oh, I'll just have a tea, and then started to cry a wee bit, and then they kind of could see I was upset, so they got the bill, and then I went in the car, and my mum went, oh. it was just me and my mum, and she's like, oh. and I just broke down, and it just was in floods of tears, man, and just do you told, think told her everything, and then do you think that's what you needed? I think that's what I needed. You just had to have that outburst and just get it out. Yeah, I yeah. think so. I think so. I mean, I had always been crying on my own, but yeah, but for anyone to see, and then that was my mum was like, right, okay, because she knew I'd been struggling, but she never kind of. She, she never, she never that. knew to the extent. And then so then I, uh, she was like, right, okay, and then we got the doctors, got up an appointment, went to see the doctors. I was going to say like, you don't want to admit that you've got a problem, but yeah. you don't want to admit something's wrong because, especially us as athletes, we are we are meant to be strong yeah. uh, people that don't show weakness. We are meant to look superior and just be like an athletic. Or come with this, eh? uh, we're just an yeah. athletic yeah. fit that people think is superhuman. They probably could go and train six hours a day, seven days a week, go to competitions, win. Or lose and then just go back to training. Like they think we're almost robotic, yeah. but it's, uh, the thing is, we're, we're, human. we're just we're human. Still human as well. yeah. yeah, just yeah. we just like doing some sport. Exactly. Like doing it. To, yeah. Uh, it's like it's like, it's like, it's like, it. in, like anyone's got a passion, but exactly. it just happens. It was a sport. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I was on the medication. And it was just a kind of slow process of getting back to normal, which I did. Yeah, don't get me wrong, there wasn't a smooth process again, but. Setbacks, so setbacks, so like things are going different. We're doing the, the K1 and Leipzig and Hal. Yeah. Um, not doing so well there. And then remember, like, I've been through getting months prior. It was, it was a lot. And just to get back on out of beating again and just kind of being a bit more myself was looking back, that was actually some achievement. Okay. I got beat off someone who I knew I could beat, and I'd proved that later on. Um, but uh, yeah, 
yeah, it was just, yeah. Right, it was, it was a whirlwind and that was kind of a setback though because I never did so well and then I was kind of back down in the dumps again and just and then the thing is if but yeah you just kept just yeah just and, got and better. It's, 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 a, it's a difficult thing I know we've always been told trust the process but always process driven we're never driven by results but if you're feeling in that state where you're feeling so negative about yourself about your performance it's so difficult to take the positives back to training yeah. to work on them because in your own head you just think I'm oh, shit almost like yeah. I did and then performing my capabilities so it's uh, so difficult to take positives from that and go back to square one almost exactly exactly yeah, well, yeah. I, th- I feel like definitely I mean that was kind of the story and then apart from there that I just kind of got back yeah. up to where I was and I ended up Getting the results I needed to go to uni, and now I'm in my fourth year on my dissertation, and now I'm like, oh no, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> dissertation. The, the, the stress of yeah. going into the real life afterwards. Yes, yeah. exactly. And I've still, don't get me wrong, I've still got my, my other worries as well. It's yeah. still, you know, it's trying to get into the postgrad for P now is, is another challenge. So, but at the same time, these stresses now are just stresses of what to do well, not yeah. stresses that lead to anxiety. That's yeah, that's, yeah, it's naturally stressful. It yeah, just shows you care and it shows you you want something. That's it. I know. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I'm not the only person on the planet that's stressing about getting into stuff. There's other people, probably yeah. thousands of people, like across Scotland as well, who just want to do that course that I want to do, and they'll be all thinking the same thing. Yeah, exactly. You know, if it, if it, I'm prepared for it to be an unlucky, uh, an unlucky one, just because that's the way it can work sometimes. Yeah. So it's just what am I going to do for that year? I'll do, I'll do things to kind of keep me in that look, um, yeah. just keep improving me as a, yeah, as someone that wants to aspire to, to be a me teacher, so, but yeah. So yeah, for me, I feel, I feel like it's affected us in different ways, especially the initial starting point of it for me, it was being in, in an environment, knowing someone had mental health and almost helping them in any way you could but you probably know yourself if 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 it's the initial starting point you don't want you can't take help from someone you think that you you don't need it and you almost think i need to do it myself to be able nah, so I was like, to, myself. to get there it. yeah but that's just a, it's just a wee it's just a wee episode that will it'll go away yeah and, exactly uh, but I knew that deep down that is what they like they needed mm-hmm. like to help them and like having to deal with someone who was struggling it was just as difficult as I would say someone going through it because you're trying to give them all your love all your attention all your care to try and help them but it was never enough it was like they, they didn't it or didn't not not appreciate it yeah but it was almost like you were trying so hard but they could never they could never take it because they didn't you want to admit that something was wrong uh, or that they actually needed help like as we say like we were talking about trying to do the simple stuff tasks that that adds up so i was trying to help them do just even the simple task or try and take pressure off them and and yeah. in, 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 in some respects yeah, or some, say like cooking dinner for example taking yeah. the pressure off something which but it's going back to that thing where you need to, you need for your own mind that you need to do it for yourself yeah it's it's a hard one because you know it's like when i was kind of at my lowest and stuff um, my mum would help me with, yeah you know, bring up some tea or there's a glass of water and I always appreciated it. And yeah, that's I always like, appreciated always it. Appreciate times it. That I'm just like, oh, stop baby me. Yes, ah, that and things. And you just you're easily irritated and that's yeah. what it is. You're, yeah. You're easily irritated and yeah. just annoyed at the situation you're in, but you yeah. can't you can't do anything about it. All you can do is just, you just need to be patient and Yeah. And that's work a, with it yeah. And that's the thing I like, speak up, that's it. Yeah. And it's a matter of being honest with the person. Yeah. Maybe it's not caring for you or 
just been like I'm a bit easy and annoyed today. Um, yeah. Sorry, Education. sorry if I'm acting silly. Yeah. Um, it's just I'm really struggling with this yeah. today. I'm, this is just the way and my that, body's that, reacting today. And that's and the thing uh-huh. because I knew. Like they were struggling, mm-hmm. I'd always uh, almost compensate. I was trying to help them more because yeah. I knew how difficult it was for them to even do the simplest of tasks. And it was just out of love and care that I was helping them. And and I knew they appreciated it. Yeah. But it was almost like it would never help. Yeah. And it's just kept on. It was just like like almost like a circle, like a process of I gave them every single thing because you do it out of love yeah. for the person and, and you care for them. But it was almost like it was never enough. That, that's not anything to do with them not appreciating it. It's just it's just it's just, it's just it's just yeah, it's just the way your head yeah. is in that uh, frame of mind. Yeah. And I, I feel like being in that environment and dealing with it for such a long time and giving your giving someone everything and like, I had days where I wasn't feeling training, but you'd always have to be, like, a happier person and be positive to try and... Help inf- yeah, everyone else. Yeah. Everyone else and influence their mood to try and lift yeah. them up. So it was like, I was having to mask what I was going through to try and yeah. help them because they were in a worse-off yeah. situation. How did all that Just out of curiosity and just... As well. how, did, how did that affect you going to compete? Because you obviously competed yeah. at the highest level, you were going travelling all over the world yeah. just so you had to leave yeah. the person you cared about yeah. to go and try and fulfil your goals. But in the back of your mind, you were still worried about how they were getting on and oh, yeah. trying to compete at a high level. It was, it, was, it, was, uh, it was such a distressing time because I knew what they were going through and it, it always did affect my mood. Mm-hmm. But it's one of those things where what we do, it's like a job almost. Once you go into it, before the time that you're competing or training, you just need to switch off. Yeah. And that is what I've done. It would never affect my performance or anything like that, but it would affect everything on the lead up and the aftermath of it. Because it was probably 2018 World Championships where like, it really came to fruition. in my final year of uni I was working I was training towards the worlds and I, I felt like I was in the like, peak physical condition of my life I also had to I wouldn't say care for someone else uh, because like that's I, I, I would never say that's what it was it was just you always had to love and care for someone more like yeah, someone it's not that you care care for them in the way that you, you, you love them. Like yes, you just, exactly. You just worry. Yes, okay. and it was more of a worry. A, and they're doing okay. Yeah, and you want them to be okay because you know how yeah. much they're struggling. No, that like you're literally caring, yeah. doing everything for them. Not yes, exactly. Not sort of way, but the yeah. way that, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. And, yeah, at, at the world, like, training, yeah, absolutely fine. Train uh, session before, day before competing, went great. Uh, that's thing, like everything was in the mind during the training session. Training session went great. But it was like when but the after, session after, after the session had finished. Rally, like, I'd it, it's like having to talk to that person again. We assured them what they're doing is great and just try to be there for them as much as possible, but at the same time, we are there to do our goal and we've got a job to do. Yeah. And yeah, competition day. Obviously, as I say, like you switch off. You, you need, as athletes, you need to be selfish in that respect, which is a difficult thing to do. But I'll say I went there and I did. I did give it a hundred uh, percent. But obviously, no lead up to the competition day. Everyone that was there will know. Like they got let in like forty minutes before we were allowed to compete and all that because like team facts, and all that. So it wasn't an ideal. But that can still throw you off though. Yeah, oh, oh no, it did. It did because obviously, as athletes, we're used to routine, we're used to training a certain way of 
we know what we works. Know what so like. Like. What do you like in terms of? Oh, yeah, I, I like a good hour and a half warm up, a good stretch, get nice and warm. I know most just get my mind ready because I like yeah. to be like I know some people like to be hyped up and all that, but I like to relax almost and just yeah. like yeah, just completely relax before we go on. Because at that point, everyone's different still. Like yeah, but everyone's in the same boat. They've got the same scenario, but yeah, people like yourself can feel a long warm up and other yeah. people can just prefer just that's the thing like obviously up. when we are training and warm up and competing we want to not focus on as, we want to focus on as little as possible so like we can just almost go into autopilot yeah. whereas when I was warm up I was like what's the main things I need to warm up what's the main things like I don't have time to warm up so like, I had all this going through in my head at the same time and then going through in the warm up area as well like uh, the like competition area, like back and forth and all that kind of throws you, especially with timings and all that. Like, yeah. you don't know when you're going to go on, so it's just difficult in that sense. But yeah, competition itself didn't go to plan. But so afterwards, it was, it was just back to worrying yeah. again, and at the same time, I felt absolutely shit because of my performance. Yeah, like it, it wasn't the way I wanted so it to go. So it affected you a lot worse. Yeah, having that worry of. Your loved one that you care about, yeah. worrying about them, and yeah, and, they and, on, and then and as I say, I, yeah, as I say, that that never affected my performance. Like we are yeah. professionals, we are athletes. Once we go into that training zone, that that's it. You're there. Yeah. yeah, you're there. But the aftermath, I was feeling down on myself. But you always had to pick yourself back up again to be positive and reassuring for for your loved one who yeah. you cared about to make sure because I wouldn't say I was suffering from like mental health problems yeah. like that back then I was just having to help someone else deal with it was just a more of a situation problem more of a, a, problem, more of a, a stress yeah but at that yeah. point it's not it's, it's probably a kind of part that a component that would probably lead to something later, yeah. later on but you know, yeah which, yeah yeah. Obviously, yeah. Uh, but yeah I was just I was just dealing with that, and yeah, I, I just afterwards, I it was just I needed something to like take my mind off it, like yeah. take my mind off the worry and the stress and just everything because it all like just came in one because on the lead up to like the world, you've always got that competition to focus on, yeah. right? Right, this is going to go well. That was always your thing, your goal. As we were saying, like you've got uh, to work towards. Yep. But once that was over and it didn't go your way, it was like, well, what next? And like, I just had a blowout at that world, and it, it really affected me. Like just everything, like my performance, then everything back home, like it all just came like a boiling point almost. And I just kind of wanted to just forget about it yeah. for a night and just yeah, just try and put it in the back of my mind and. It it wasn't it wasn't obviously as we say hindsight it wasn't it wasn't the way to go back then but it was an easy escape yeah yeah but people have been every athlete well, yeah you get athletes that have done that as well yeah the exactly athletes, Tyson Fury I can't remember yeah. anymore off the top of my head but Tyson Fury is yeah. the one that does come to my head the most you know but also as well. going going back to it, like we never like. I never communicated that to anyone. Yeah. So it's people on the outside looking in, they all just say, like, I was just thinking it was just just a guy just, done it. It was just yeah. being an idiot. Yeah. But like like you said, you kept you kept it to yourself. Obviously yeah. it's different situations. Yeah. But it's still with the same outcome. It's still affected. Yeah, there's still there's the, the symptoms are there. And the, yeah. The same it's, it's the same symptoms. Yeah. The reason for it is always it's, different. Yeah. But uh, the symptoms are yeah. the same. And yeah. obviously yeah. after that competition, just being in the environment of having to deal with the negative way the competition went for me. And then going back home to try and be in that positive way. And just being in an environment of like you know yourself, like it's been it's not healthy like yeah like the struggle and all that so like being in that environment it affected my mental health as well because i was yeah. trying to be that confident reassuring positive did you realize person. that at the time of- no no nah. definitely not i just you never, you never do it just no yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you never do it. i just thought to myself i'm 
I wouldn't say I was spiralling, but I was just feeling low because they were feeling low yeah. in whatever moods they were in because obviously I put my all into trying to help them. And when it didn't go that way, it just affected me as well. Yeah, I was going to say, it's going to take your toll on you. Yeah. Like, well, what am I doing wrong? Or... Especially, especially yeah. when I'm, as I say, I was at uni. Uh, I was in my final year at uni. I was working, I was training. Right. You can't just drop all that as well. It's just a hard thing. Yeah, exactly. Just, it's trying yeah. to find that balance. But obviously, every free moment I had was to try and help them, yeah. which mm-hmm. was the difficult part. There was and, never a, a time for just you. Yeah. Just yeah. to kind of... Yeah. Like, there's always say be kind to yourself, but was, yeah. you never had that time to, exactly. to be kind to yourself. Because obviously, yeah. you just want to make that person happy because you love them. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it just affected me and like that that sense and like when all that ended like it just made it just made me spiral even more and yeah like it was, it was kind of like you like you're just at breaking point and uh, i was the same like physically i wasn't able to eat like i would go days without eating and i probably like, like it was like over like the first or second lockdown and I probably lost like a good six, seven kilos. Yeah. People were like, oh, he's just been dying because obviously everyone was putting on weight, but I just physically couldn't eat. Couldn't eat and yeah. I, I just never wanted to get out of bed. I didn't want to, I didn't want to talk to anyone. I just wanted to be alone, mm-hmm. and I just couldn't do anything. Yeah, it really did affect me. And at the time, I was like, fuck, it's just, it's just heartbreak. It's just this. It's just that. But it just affected me and like the long run and then like in a way of combating that and, like we, you know like we said we try to find different ways to focus like you like you try to train yeah to try and find a focus to try and block it out like, i i i found an old job like i was working like 80 hundred hour weeks like yeah. driving it on fairland back to my job in glasgow sleep for like an hour go back and that was like a constant cycle for three four months so i try to just combat it by throwing myself into something be busy be busy be, be busy, busy. Yeah. yeah thinking that's that's going to be the way but as as you know like, like it, it doesn't help it just it just almost makes you makes you worse yeah. because you're not actually helping yourself in that long run that's, i guess like you never know humans came me planet earth if you like a technical they never had all the answers they had to figure out how to make a fire they had to figure out how, how to get food what mushrooms were the good mushrooms <laughs> which mushrooms were the bad ones yeah. you know what i mean uh, it's the same with like mental illness it's it's a trial and error and what works for you um, how you can kind of manage it deal with it and all that sort of stuff but which is a good thing now with like there is a lot more knowledge out there with therapists and things like that where speak to someone close to you if you feel like you can I think you always I think you always can but uh, you can go, go to them because they they deal with it they deal with it and the chances are they've probably heard a lot exactly more. exactly I feel like it was the same as you talked to your mum like yeah. I had to speak to someone and it was the biggest I would say relief but just having someone there who didn't almost judge you they just wanted to listen yeah. and just try and help you like they, all they wanted to do was help you and be yeah. there for you and I think that was the most reassuring part that like, my confidence was just broken like I couldn't like, I felt as though like, I wasn't able to train like I wasn't good enough to train I wasn't good enough to do this I wasn't good enough to do that you just had that having that person there yeah. to reassure you yeah. that you were good and yeah they, they just help you was probably the biggest thing and that was just, just to have the coach said as well yeah. to go hey that's you did good yeah. you didn't feel like it was that good but coach is saying see it too maybe I'm not saying so you can uh, go back to go back to look at everything you can also do you know? but I knew life you didn't have that <laughs> yeah yeah it's easy but you know like, communication is the biggest thing it, and it, it, it really does because after that I did focus on like the little things yeah like, I was like right, I'm going to get out of my bed and do this today, yeah. do that today. And then you've got, you've got CrossFit. Exactly, yeah, that, so that, that, that was the biggest thing. Like, I feel like, just from an outside point of view, I mean, obviously I don't know what yeah. goes on in your mind and all that sort of stuff um, on a daily basis, but I feel like from me seeing you on, on social media, obviously social media is not anything to do. Yeah. 
Yes, it's exactly. Like, Anyone that, can be. Go that, but just <laughs> for me, knowing you, I feel like the 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 CrossFit has given you a reason to kind of get a bit. Um, yeah, absolutely. Because enjoy what you can enjoy through this lockdown. Yeah. And kind of try and make the most out of it. Definitely. Because obviously, what we've had at Cry, it's a community. Yeah. And having that day away from you, you just. We'd always have, no matter what what type of day we had, we could always just go to train, just have a laugh, be yeah. with our friends. Obviously, being in London, you couldn't have that. So yeah. I'd, I'd be fine. I can all wait to be part of a community. But at the same time, I just love pushing myself. Right? I just love having that challenge. Be able to try and overcome adversity because we'd always been challenged in Kirai. Yeah. Like, we'd always had some, some, something to focus on, and that is what I found in CrossFit. Just being able to, even if it was just a simple workout, just having people around you who were all doing the same thing, working towards the same goal, of just and just pushing each other yeah. and just trying to be the best you can. And at the same time, that helped with the class structure. So, like, if I sign in, like, I did a lot of class in the third class, I had to go, I had to be up at that time. Yeah. And it just helped build that structure, which is what I needed. And, yeah, that, 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 that was all, this is almost like the main reason why I've started these YouTube channels and all that, to try and almost challenge myself and show that no matter what challenges you face, you can always overcome them, no matter how simple the task is. Right now, I'm I'm in a great place where I can go off scale a mountain or yeah. do crazy challenges. But the message I want to get across is all the challenges that you've got, even if it's getting out of bed, that's it. Even if it's just getting out of bed or going out of walk, that is a great challenge to say that person at that time in their life to achieve what they want to achieve. Because when they start that, think these are simple tasks I should be able to do these. Like they should, <laughs> yeah, they, they, yourself, they, yeah. they shouldn't matter. Oh, I could do this. Yes. Yes. Everyone does that. that. But until you realise how it actually like affects you, like doing those little things and like how it just gives you more confidence. Because I think for me it was a confidence aspect yeah. that I'd lost. Like, I just lost all confidence in everything that I could do. And I think it's building on that each day. Having those those goals, it yeah. really, really helped. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, obviously, we we're talking about this as like our day day to day mental health, but that like sport in general affects like everyone's mental health. Like I think even more so now because especially because of lockdown, but just over the years, as we say. People expect athletes to be superhuman almost. They expect them to go to training, go to a competition, and just keep repeating that cycle yeah. over and over again. But, and if they win, going back to training again. But if they lose, going back to training again. So, like, you don't have an outlet of, I, done, I didn't perform well at a competition, I need time to refocus. Yeah. And, like if that process is just repeated, it just affects you, just grinds down on you. Especially because I think that as well, from a young age, we were told not to show weakness almost because it gives like an extra boost to your opponent. Because yeah. they're like, oh, he's struggling. I'm, I can take his exactly. easy. And I feel like us being athletes, it's, it's been more difficult to talk about that because we've almost been told to mask those emotions. So athletes in general I feel like that's why they struggle to talk about it even more because the social media plays such a role in them, they're always in the limelight, they're always meant to be this role model people aspire to be, so they think, I can't show this, I can't show that, what if I lose my spot, what if I can't do this, what if I can't do that, and I feel like this that's a process nowadays it really is in the forefront of like athletes. And it really is something that should be discussed, which yeah. is why we are here today. Yeah. Because it really it really is something that needs to be taken a grip of and dealt with because it's just gonna lead people down a dark path. Like, I know 
like there's athletes in the national team as well who who this has affected and it still does to this day. Yeah. And that's that's almost because we just think as athletes we're meant to be able to do everything. Exactly. No, no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. That is exactly. a really a crazy thing. So how so how would you say like the mental health side of things affected the sport? Like would you go to a competition? Before you even competed, would you feel down about yourself, down about your performance, or have not as much confidence? Uh, yeah, like there's been some where you know confidence has been shaken due to yeah, poor performance. Or, yeah. um, you know, like remember, do, do, does that affect you? Like um, one bad performance, are you able to put that back to the back of your mind and focus on the next one? Like, like I've we are better at it. For, yeah. for, I've gotten better at it. Um, yeah. For just the sheer amount of years and ex- times of experience yeah. of doing it. Um, but I never came, like, there was never an active thing for me. Like, the time I remember, I didn't get picked for the national team first time, as I've spoken about on this yeah. before. Um, that affected my confidence a lot. And uh, I'd always just be worried about the next competition. Am I going to get into the team again? wasn't there and I was getting beat off people that I shouldn't have gotten beaten off like in myself and I shouldn't have been beaten off by those kind of people um, with all due respect to them and stuff like that but, yeah, um, no, of course because yeah. you, you're, you're, you're confident in your own abilities yeah. you've, you've trained for so many years you know in yourself how you should be performing yeah and if it you're not performing to that level yeah it wasn't to my level that I could at the yeah. time and then the kind of Communication kind of helped a wee bit with, with my parents and stuff, but again, as I said, I wish I, wish I just spoke to the coaches a bit, the coaches a bit more, yeah. just a wee bit more, but as a kid, I just, I just didn't, I just was like... You think, you almost think it's going to sort itself, as a kid, yeah. and, and it's not until, which, which is something that any young person is watching and they are feeling like this, the main thing that we want to get across today is to communicate, mm-hmm. no matter what person it is, if it's a coach, a family member, a friend, a complete random stranger, just like the world now, mental health, you're able to speak about it even more. It's becoming more of a normal thing. For athletes, not as much, which is what I'm trying to get across today that no matter if you're an athlete or just a normal human being, you need to communicate no matter what. So if you're watching this and you are struggling, just reach out to someone. Someone you trust. Yeah, well, someone you trust. Someone you're comfortable with to tell this stuff. And. Like, they, they will be there for you. Like, they may not they may not push you, but even just getting out there listening to uh, getting someone to listen and just reassure you that you can do whatever you say your mind to, that that is going to be the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. One hundred percent. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I feel in me as an athlete, I always dealt with pressure. Like I always loved the, the idea of pressure is probably the opposite of you. Yeah. Like, you, you don't like the pressure, but I love the pressure aspect. I love going up against someone that I'm like, oh, can I beat them? Can I beat them? Or just yeah. being in that environment of pushing yourself to your absolute limits. I just love that pressure of, like... Yeah, I, I love the, the challenge of yes, the, the point, challenge. You know, and, yeah. yeah, I love, I love the, the challenge of it. The, the, pr- the pressure point, it depends what the pressure is. If it's something to do with like a deadline at, at university, I'm not the best yeah. with pressure. And, you know. do, 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 does like university like correlate to your performance in sport? Uh-huh. Like, if you're doing good at university, you're going to do good at sport. If you're having a good day in your relationship, or you're going to have a good day in your sports, yeah. I feel like they, this is a thing for like athletes, especially. Like, I feel like. Because we are in such a constant cycle, we need everything to go well to almost impact our performance, whereas we need to be able to deal with bad things yeah. as well in our life. I was going to say, there's going to be, you probably go for life and you watch all famous athletes, whether that be whatever sport, um, they're going to have, not everything's going to be perfect for them because not everything in life is perfect. Exactly. It's just Which is what we're trying to get across. Life isn't perfect, yeah. so that's why you can't beat yourself up yeah. so much, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, it's probably we've probably seen so many famous athletes on, on TV that have performed so well, but yeah. 
they'll, they'll have something that's not 100% right. They could, they could have an injury at the back of their mind that could have been yeah. affecting them a little bit. They could have had well, issues talk, with family at home. Talking about injury, like, obviously I fractured my ankle and it was a pivotal point. It was when the Premier League's events started counting towards like the Olympic rankings and all that. Yeah, with the points. And, and with a lot more. Yeah, and I fractured my ankle and I missed three Premier Leagues. And like they were like, you could also miss the Europeans. And I was absolutely distraught. Like that, the, my mental health was affected then. Yeah. Because I was like, I'm going to miss. Of course, you're sitting there with your foot up. You're going to play this up. Exactly. Yeah. Because obviously, we are so used to 22 years for me, 17 yeah. years for you. Like, we're, we're so used to just being in that zone. And when we're taken away from it, it just almost we're like, what, what do we do? And I feel like in sport as well, it's like, when we have it taken away from us, like football, for example, yeah. we just don't know what to do. Yeah. And it just affects us like, because we're so used to being in that routine. Well, it's life and then kind of, there's a worry of like, oh, we'll get back to the level the way I was because exactly. training isn't the same. I don't exactly. care okay, what anyone says, training is not the same unless you have, you are the lucky, the lucky people that can have, like, you can train throughout this and, yeah. and the, the facilities with the mats and that and yeah. all that. And don't care what anyone says, there's, you can be as fit as you like, but the, the karate is not going to be there because you don't have the training partners. Yeah. Well, some people do. Yeah. There's lucky people out there that yeah. do. Um, but then there's people that aren't. They're you know, just of the rest of us that are. Yeah. Me, so you know, the worry for me is, oh, well, will I get back to that? And because obviously, as you yeah. say, people have been training. At that level. That's, that's my worry. So it's like they're going to be ahead before you even. Yes, yeah, so that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, you know, you can get, as you say, you can just sit there. Oh, come on, come on, I get back to where I was because I was, felt like I was in such a good place. Um, yeah. I, felt like I feel I'm, like all of us have said was, that. Yeah, was, all at peak. We gave everything for that. For yeah. that and oh man, it's just it was so destroying just to go. It's cancelled and and it's, it's yeah. almost like how do we pick ourselves back up yeah. from that? Because obviously, this is our life. This is what we aspire to do. What we give a hundred percent every single training session yeah. for. And having that taken away from us, it's like. Like, and if, what, you, if you were to you ask me, I would just say, just speak to your coach, just speak to someone, because I still don't have the answers to how I'm going because I'm still trying to figure this out. This is still, I don't have a got this master, this yeah. mental health thing with the way COVID is and all that. I'm, I'm still, I'm still yeah. struggling, I've got my good days, I've got my bad days. Today is an okay day, I'm out and I'm up with you, and yeah. I had my, you know, my time meeting, meeting here, meeting there. Exactly, that, that, so that, that structure that, in your life. That helped me, but yeah. to say that I'm feeling brand new is... No, that's so yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling brand new but I'm just in a place where I can just kinda get up and I know things will get better. You know, it's just kind of yeah. stick, sticking in there and going out and not giving up. That's literally it. So you say like not giving up, going now, like how did what what was it you'd done? So like for people watching, how did you get from like your anxiety and all that? How did you get from there? To now being confident in your performance again mm-hmm. and be able to be back love and train like how, how did you get there like what was like just like a simple process like simple process it's well, not, simple. not simple obviously yeah. it's not simple it's not simple it's long it's, it's yeah uh, that, that's the thing yeah it's up and down um you don't really realize it's the process when you when you face the downs you think that the, the, the process is just going to go well, I'd say it's a you know, you stuff, see, yeah. you see, like on on social media, and it's just a zigzag line. You're going back the way to go forward, and, and that's what it was. Um, I remember the Youth World Cup, and uh, what was it? East Corfu. Yep. Um, I did okay, but and just things were going right for other teammates, and they were getting their medals, yeah, and I know, they were all yeah. getting their big breaks. And, Gonna come. Nah, I've been there, been yeah. there. Yep, so, no exact, yeah. Say, you know, I mean, I had a bye and then I, did I have a bye? I think I had a bye, I can't remember. I must, I got into like the third round yeah. or something, which was okay. Then it was okay, it wasn't. Great, but those but around you were doing meddling. Meddling, yeah. yeah. When's my big break gonna come? So, how, how, how did you build on that? Obviously, no, you, you, you were like, down there. And, and then a couple of weeks later, um, got the phone call. 
coach and then a coach um, was doing that. I was, I was selected yeah, for the Worlds in Guadalajara and um, the Junior Worlds. Is that like a very motivation for you? So that was like a whole, that was just a whole piece of confidence in my opponent. Yeah, this is my goal that I work towards. So I just go, go, going back to it, do you think? That was like the main thing for you, like in yeah. this process, having goals each time. As we say, like those simple goals, right? Yeah, because we had this the small comp, but not small. They weren't small competitions by yeah. any means, but they were the building block competitions yeah. where we had there was, there was room at that point to if there was an error going to happen, you yeah. managed to try and make those errors and fight opponents to at that level they could potentially be fighting that the yeah. world. So it was all important. It was all looking up. So the lead up didn't get better. Yeah. Um, and now yeah. do you think that So goes, compared to the way I was sorry from the start of the year yeah. to the end of the year it was it was like the, the, the yeah. it, was, it, was, it was great. It was great to look back and see what we were working on. Yeah, it just shows you what yeah, that, 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 that's how it is well, like obviously it's difficult if you are in a slump, but like the hard work will pay off in the next time. If if you yeah. believe it and you want it enough. But do you think Obviously, you have the stage of anxiety. To be able to go back, to be able to train for Baku and feeling at the peak of your performance, do you think it was having those little goals um, each time yeah, that like, helped? I couldn't say I'd suffered from anxiety um, since so obviously things got better. So, from yeah. about 2018, yeah. since the time I got into university, from there on, no, was I, it was. So wait, right, but was that almost? It was like a period off. Yeah. It was, like, was that like because you achieved your dream and your goal of getting to university? So everything. I felt like it, it's okay. It just, was like a load off. It was just keep working and yeah, things things work out, things happen. Just keep the head down, like yeah, it will happen. Um, and then kind of when COVID hit, that was when I kind of came back. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. through the lockdown, I was I was fine. I had my routines going. I was like. Just, at the time I was naive and I thought hey, it'll be yeah, like, like a couple months we all were like, that <laughs> yeah. was, I say I was naive like everyone was because yeah. we all fed the same information from the same yeah. people same we, were, we were all like hey, yeah. we're going to keep on training we're going to get back so, to competition I was training twice summer. a day in the house yeah. and I, like, I had this amazing routine going yeah. and then the longer it went on the, just, the harder I found it like, I was just monotonous I was yeah. just the same thing I was like yeah. oh, I don't want to do it with like, there's no no community to push you there was no, there's no partner work there, there's no, yeah. Yeah, it's just, God, it's, it was just, it was so hard and, aye, it was, aye, it was just, it was so hard, but, um, luckily we're going to be, we're going to be back. Yeah, I know, that's I know, amazing. I we're going to be back. Yeah, uh, the time, yeah. yeah. So, do you think, obviously, that you don't there's facilities and places around for, like, mental health, like, individually, like, out of sport? Do you think there's enough resources within sport? No, no, that's simple, simple and honest answer. No, not within the world of that. What, what, what would you expect to see? Like, what, expect what, to see? What, what, like, back then, what would have helped you as an athlete, like have it to your disposal? Is there someone at the club? I don't, I don't know, I don't have those kind of answers, but I, there's just something that needs to be done. And I don't know if I'm the, the first. Do you, do you think? Having almost maybe within the realms of Scottish cry, like having like a body or like a panel of people you could go to. Because obviously we've exper- people, yeah, we've yeah. experienced this, so we're able to give an insight and just be able to show how like the stages to go through or how to yeah. realise it. Do you think it should be something? I think for juniors coming into the, the, yeah. the junior team, you know, just cadets coming in fresh. Yeah. They don't. It's like we, we, we train physically, but we don't train yeah. mentally. Do you think that's something that should possibly be spoken about? How, maybe not how to deal with more. mental health, but how to, how to, like, do, like, all switch off from training, or how to focus on this, or having different things that would help help you in the long run, like, mentally. Yeah, just some things like that. Maybe some sort of training programme type regime thing of 
practicing mindfulness, practicing like just that kind of coaching aspect, this, this like sports psychology. I mean. Yeah. So, so going Something back like to that, that, like, do you do any mindfulness meditation? Anything like that? I do. I've got I've got two two apps on my phone that yep. I use: Calm and Headspace. Yep. Um, and is that is that positively impacted? It's like, definitely yeah. benefited me. It definitely benefited me. But it's like it's one of those things. That, like you, you're going to train. where your mind's going to be racing, you're going to do a video but it's not going to help you, yeah. you're not going to feel, well, it's going to help you but it's not going to make you feel better there and then. Yeah, it's just, it's almost giving you the tools. It's giving you the you, tools. You, you yeah. still need to do all the work yourself yeah. but it's, it's giving you the tools to do it. It's like anything, it's like what we've spoken about, like if you want to achieve something like during this lockdown, if you want to make yourself happy or go and climb a mountain or something like that, can tell you to do it or get you there you need to physically do it yourself yeah. which is the difficult part like especially with mental health like you need to address it first and foremost talk to someone about it but you physically need yeah to do it to make to make any change it's like anything in life to get where you want to be you physically need to do it which is a difficult thing to always do Especially when you're not feeling at your best, but the only, the only person that can change it is yourself. Which I, I feel why maybe it's a good thing to have like a body or a panel of people around to help coach. Like, that I'm coming because obviously the stress of being thrown out of the national team and fighting for your spot, you need to fight it. Like, it can have like, it's such a negative impact on you, constantly having to worry about the next competition, the next training session, because they worry about keeping your spot. But I think. It's definitely something to maybe look into, talk to people about because I feel like it is something, as we say, like there's more charities and all that for like mental health out with sport. Yeah. But within, within the realm of sport, there's not much. Yeah. As we say, like it does affect so many people. Like, I know so many people on the national team that it's affected. But it's almost one of those things where you just have to deal with it yourself. You've not, you've not had someone to go to. There's no one within. The governing body that can, yeah. can go to, and at the, same, at the same time, this is no offence to the governing body, but yeah, it's not. They're, they're, it's they're, they're all an older generation where maybe this has not affected them. Yeah. But I feel like mental health now is obviously a lot more spoken about yeah. and all that, and it's affecting people like a lot. It's, it's not a dig. It's not yeah. a bash. It's just a. It's just a change of the ways and having to adapt to the way society just, is. Yeah. It's all you're always looking to do something with it's a business. Or something. Do you make this business, this product, this oh, yeah, like yeah, anything, this yeah. essay, this piece of work? Yeah. How do I make like how do I make me better as a person yeah. by the training or whatever? And this is one of those ones where how do we go from here? Because how do we make the world evolve and things evolve? How do we make an elite level world athlete? Because it's back in the day, it was just physical. Like if you punch someone, there you go, that's a point. But it's a very technical sport now. And there's a lot more components. Yeah. And yeah. the mind plays such an important part in that. So I feel like that's something that should definitely be looked into to try and improve athletes. I feel like it's just something that should, like, a governing body or people should talk about more because I feel like having that resource around will yeah. just benefit athletes and coaches because it will give them a better understanding of an athlete's point of view and then a coach will be able to help them yeah. in the long run so it will have a positive impact because you can in a relationship with both you speak to your friends and it will help I'm not saying it doesn't yeah. help but there's only so much that your friend can do yeah realistically like you don't have the things that can 
in terms of your health and yeah. Do you know I'm really like, like I could speak to you as much as I wanted, but you're not gonna have all the answers. Exactly. You could speak to me, I'm not gonna have all the answers. Yeah. I don't claim to have all the answers. Yeah. Um, that's that, 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 that's yeah. and the one thing we want to get across is we're we're not providing you with all the answers. We're just providing you with our experience and what we think is the best process to try and help overcome or deal with issues. It may not work for everyone, but it, it, it's almost worked for us. So we'll just try and put that across and help you. Or maybe if you can take one thing from this and it helps you, that 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 that, that is the main thing from this. We are, we are not trying to say do this and it'll yeah. solve everything. It's a discussion. Yeah, it's a discussion. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but it's, 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 if you get some help from it or yep. just some wee point to take away from it. And, yeah. yeah, that's so to to almost end it, to wrap it up, well what's the one thing that you think is the biggest strike? to almost overcome like what you should do if you're feeling like this driving force um, like I, I, if you if you're if you've got these thoughts in your mind what, 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 would, what would you say someone should do <sighs> it's gonna get right deep here but I, I just for me it's the people around me like family friends loved ones you know um, who you associate with yeah being there being there to see them Happy people, they just want the best for you. It will just create such a positive the the environment. If I'm not here, then they're going to be in a world of pain. And, yeah, and, and all that, and I don't. Yeah, which is I don't, I don't, don't want. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't wish that on. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean. Yeah. So that's my big drive for yeah. uh, getting better. That's pretty, pretty deep, obviously. Yeah. But like, you know, maybe if someone feeling like that, I could help them. Like just, just that and. Yeah, just just trusting your family and friends, and know that they are, they are there for you no matter what. They they it's, will it's love cliche, you. It's cliched so much, but things will get better. It will get better. You know, it will. Um, as as with anything, it's a process. Aye. It, it is a process. It, it may not it may not take a day, it may not take a week, but if you it may keep, not even take a year, it could take if, longer. Yeah, yeah. If you keep but if you keep building and chipping away, then it will eventually. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the main yeah. thing. Uh-huh. And I think I think for me, just going off. Yeah. Your point, I think communication, like it really, yeah. it really helped me. Like, it was all building up for me, and uh, it almost just exploded. I was like at a breaking point, I didn't know what to do. Confidence was at an all time low, but I spoke to someone, I went out a walk, and I just got all of it out. Like, I was crying, mm-hmm. I just got all the thoughts in my head out, and they were able to reassure me, help me with my confidence, put a plan in place of what I should do each day to try and focus and that that, that was the biggest thing that helped me just communicating yeah. with there's, someone there's another thing for anyone that could, that could maybe help someone I'll speak of my own experience in a bit but just to ask you like yeah. what what did you after you you had that breakdown yeah. and you you cried you let your emotions out what did you feel shortly after oh. what for, was, for me was it, it wasn't an instant relief when I yeah it wasn't an instant relief yeah. you felt what did you feel? Uh, oh, again, it yeah. was an, an instant relief, but it was the fact that I was able to talk to someone, and it was just the fact that someone cared. Yeah. Someone cared enough to give up their time to help me, because I feel like when you're in that dark yeah. place, you just don't think anyone. What, what, what did you feel though for physically? Physical. Uh, did you feel tired? Like. For instance, I felt, I, felt, yeah. I felt quite exhausted. I, I feel like getting, when, once I got it all out, it was yeah. like, it was almost such a relief that I was, I was like, like oh, yeah. It yeah. was like, yeah. Um, so that's a normal thing when you yeah. when you let all your emotions kind of come out and you talk, you talk it all out. You're going to feel, you'll feel tired because you've had that in your head for so long. And it's weird how that works with the brain when you just let thoughts go and... Yes. Um, yeah, I remember feeling so tired. 
I think I went for an app after that. <laughs> like, did you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I just... You just need, you just need to switch off. Yeah, because uh, because your mind's like yeah. overworking. Like yeah, yeah as much as you would nice. overwork, your just you have a heavy arm, arm and chesty or whatever, like arm back, whatever it is, heavy upper body day, and your upper body is going to be absolutely like yeah. exhausted. So you need to rest that. Yeah. Same, same with the brain. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It really is. And that'll help in the long run. With yeah. But yeah. I'll say thanks for taking the time. No, no problem. Uh, no problem. Uh, uh, the, the, main, the main thing we want to get across is we just want to share our experiences. What we are saying, it's not right and it's not wrong. Mm-hmm. It's just a discussion that we've opened up because we believe that communication is one of the key things to hi- try and help combat this. And mm-hmm. if you want to take one thing, two things, however many yeah. things away from this video, then uh, we... we we, it's like we've helped yeah. like this is what we try to do we're just trying to help and give our experience of what we went through and hopefully it'll help you and your process to maybe stop it getting to a certain point or maybe just to help you mentally in the long run because as athletes or just human beings in general like the mind is just as important as the physical aspects and you need to train that as well and know your own thoughts and be with them. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great stuff. So that has been Real Talk with John Shafranic. Mm-hmm. And thank you again. Thanks for having me on. Cheers. For, yeah, yeah, a great experience. Make so. sure you subscribe. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> but yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.